Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Hey, I wonder if you keep hearing this message over and over that you're supposed to be over communicating and messaging, but it feels hard or it feels confusing or it feels yucky to you. And that is why I am introducing you today to Jessica Riverson. Jessica was actually my first coach. I learned everything about starting my business from her in her academy. She is now, and she's an intuitive business coach, and she is a master of messaging. She she can do amazing things with words, and that's why I wanted to introduce you to her today. She has a podcast. She has a she has a a group program. She like I, I can't even tell you how many awesome offers she has, but I'm really glad to have her on today because I want you to listen and learn from her all about messaging. So I'm just going to turn it right over to Jessica. Thank you so much for being here because I know you're back-to-back uh, calls today. So thanks for making time for me. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I, I adore you. I hope you know that. <laughs> um, and I, I hope, I know that the audio is a little weird, so I hope everyone can hear me and kind of get the message I'm trying to share. Obviously, we're just doing the best that we can in general in life right now, right? So this is one of those situations where we're just making do. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to talk about messaging, especially in this current um, time in, in history. And I was thinking about, you know, what I would share, and it, it occurred to me that everything I'm going to share is actually not a lot different than like, like what I have to share about messaging is, is the same. Really. I I do have some stuff that's like particular to this, you know, time right now, but in general, when you learn about authentic messaging, um, it's the same stuff, whether there's a pandemic or some kind of world crisis, the, the principles are the same of, of authentic marketing. So I just thought that was kind of a funny thing. I'm like, oh, it's, it's the same thing. It's just, it's actually an opportunity to get better at it, right? Because if you suck at it and you do it in a really icky way, it's going to backfire on you right now a lot worse than like in normal times right. because people are highly emotional right now. And, um, you know, more easily offended. And, and there's a lot of people in pain and who are struggling, which there always are, but now it's, everything is heightened. That's right. Everything is just to the max. So I thought I would just start with some do's and don'ts that actually do relate to this, you know, time that we're going Wonderful. through and then kind of go into to some, some messaging, actually a messaging formula that everyone can start using awesome. today. Yeah. Okay. Thank so, you. and I have my notes because I actually, I think it was two weeks ago, I created a thing that is called the Attract Your Soul Tribe Guide, and I think we're gonna make sure people can get it. Yes. Um, and I put it together really quickly um, to give people a a boost because there was this question of should I even be marketing right now? You've been talking about that too. So I wanted to answer that question and help all of my clients who are coaches and healers and leaders and help them feel good and felt best you can still market your business out. So I have my notes just so I can really hit these, these great points that I've already written and you'll be able to get everything that's in the guide just when you go to the link. So couple of things are, is we don't want to feed the fear either like feeding into your own fear or feeding into your prospective clients' fears. So a lot of times in marketing, we focus on pain points. There's nothing wrong with that. I think where it starts to feel icky is when you don't paint a picture of hope. Like if you make people feel bad about themselves in your marketing, most of the time that's not going to work. But if you help them see see their pain and why they're in that pain and show them that it's possible to shift out of it. 
that's good marketing because then they're hopeful and wanting to take action towards that. And, you know, for like the no BS people, and like the real tough love type of coaches or entrepreneurs, it, you know, maybe you can be a little bit more in your face, but that's because that's you and your audience likes that. But if you just try to copy other people's messaging and sound like them and you're not really that way, it, it's not going to resonate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, I think now more than ever, it's important to, um, if you're going to paint pictures of negative or paint pictures of pain points, you have to paint, like make sure you hit the positive. Like yes. what's, what's the positive outcome they could be having? And make sure that I they understand it's achievable for them. Pain. Like it's, it's oh, yeah. possible for them to get what they, what it's possible for them to get the result. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I, I think this probably goes without saying, but I'll just say it because it's like kind of <laughs> basic, but we forget. And when you're taking in all this information today, make sure that you're clear on what problem you solve and who you solve it for, right? Mm-hmm. Like super basic, but as creatives, right? We just get all these different ideas and we're so passionate. So just make sure you're clear on what do I, what do I want to sell right now? What's the product program offering, whatever, what am I selling? Okay. So what problem is that solving? Mm -hmm. Who is it solving for? So then in your messaging, you're definitely speaking to the pain points, but you're also focusing on the positive outcomes they could be having. Um, but you're not feeding into the fear of, um, Oh, I, I, I can't market my business right now. Nobody's buying. It's, I, I have a bunch of examples of people that are buying right now. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people are buying. Why? Because everything is up for review. So whatever problems they had, whether it was a problem in their marriage or a problem um, with their parenting or a problem with growing their business or a problem with their health, it's worse now. <laughs> so... So really, it's kind of a disservice if you hide and say, oh, it's really not nice of me to offer my services right now. Um, because you're always going to have the, the people, you're, all, you're there's always going to be, be different people in your like demographic, right? So there's going to be the people that, are buy, that will buy now. There's going to be the people who are going to see you as the beacon of hope. And maybe when things get better for them, they will be buying from you, right? So there's always people that are going to step up. So another, that was a bit of a tangent, but another, another don't would be don't prevent, don't pretend that COVID-19 isn't happening, right? I mean, I wrote this three weeks ago, so I'm kind of like looking at these and going, okay, like we're now into a different phase of it, Mm -hmm. but you want to address it in your marketing, but don't like now people are kind of getting sick of it in a way. They're just like, could you not put COVID-19 in every email that you send me? (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, we're adjusting to our new normal. We don't know if it's a permanent new normal. We don't know if it's going to end. I mean, things are forever different and we ultimately just don't even know. So speak to what's going on, but don't just harp on it constantly because people are adjusting they're getting into their new thing you know it's not business as usual it's different now but people don't want to keep hearing like every email mm-hmm. tailored to that messaging because they're hearing it 24 7 true um true. another don't and i kind of already touched on this is don't assume that people can't afford there are people out there with their same jobs and their same incomes they're just doing it from home Quite likely, if if we're talking about high-end clients, some of, um, I I like to say high value because they're all valuable, but it's like, they're all valuable. How do I want to say that? Clients that are going to invest in high-end prices. I'm not saying one client's better than the other, but the people that were going to invest in high-end programs, quite likely, they're still going to be able to do that. Not all of them. Some of them, their incomes are gone or on hold or whatever. But don't assume that there aren't people out there, you know, that, that can't afford. And like I said, like a lot of problems are being heightened. Maybe there was a marriage issue and now they're both in the home 24 seven and it's like really bad. And I've actually heard that from a few people right. that it is like worse now. And so it's like, okay, well now is the time to really get some support for that. Right. So, so if you're offers that. So if you have a high end 
program that you're offering and your, your story is, I can't message this at all because it will make all the people who can't afford this feel bad. You're doing yourself a disservice and you're also doing the people who can afford you a disservice. You don't have to try to meet the needs of everybody in your audience. There might be somebody who really is up for that high end offer. Exactly. Thank gotcha. you. Yep. That was Great. Perfect. Um, another don't is don't create scarcity offers just because you're feeling the financial fear and then you're projecting it all on, onto all the humans who would buy from you. Maybe because you're experiencing it, like if you've lost an income in your household and so that puts you in a state of contraction and fight or flight and stuff like that, you want to, I mean, that's a huge opportunity for, for growth and I'm not denying the real, the real need for food, shelter, water, like not denying that whatsoever. I'm also saying that if you are a business owner, you know, this is, this is the time for business owners to shine and become resourceful and share services, you know, share your services. And in, in Carl Jung's archetypes, he talks about the warrior, the lover, the sovereign, what is it? There's four and four. So anyway, um, <laughs> but what's coming to mind is the sovereign archetype, which is, you know, I create money. Money comes from me. And I talked about this on the, my intuitive marketing masterclass the other day. We, we kind of uncovered this big aha that we were talking about your creative genius, right? And so you have your creative genius. And from that, you create programs and products and services and things like that. And then you exchange it for money, right? And so um, it's, it's all fine and dandy to be like, yes. I am sovereign, clients come from me and money comes from me and I am the source of everything. It sounds nice, but it's not usually an embodied thing. And so what we came up with was, oh, okay. So if you exchange your creative genius for money, then, and money is energy and your creative genius is energy, it's actually the same energy. So in fact, money comes from you. And I think entrepreneurs know that better than anyone is you can turn energy into matter. You can turn that creative energy into value for other people and exchange for value. Whether you're trading money or like, I don't know, you're trading like for some eggs or something like. Or toilet paper. <laughs> but the point of it is, it's like, if we can step back into our power and realize, okay, we're creating, we're, cre we're creators and we can create whatever we want. And imagine if everyone on the planet took on that thought right now. <laughs> the power, yeah. yes. So, so a big word right now is, is pivot. And I guess what I want to say about that is, in my experience, that's not true across the board. Everyone's like, you got to pivot, you got to pivot. And it's probably a good message because a lot of people do need to pivot. But I think that there's a lot of people, a lot of you know, coaches, entrepreneurs, that don't need to pivot. They actually need to dig in deeper. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. So niche down further, get, get more yeah. focused. Yes. And probably if you're struggling now, you were struggling before. <laughs> now, if that's not the case, then maybe you're one of those people that needs to pivot. So one of my clients works with yoga studio owners, every yoga studio just got shut down. So that makes it a little hard to be like, Hey, I'm going to help you build your yoga studio. Well, but guess what? She's still doing it. She's now shown them all how to take their studio online. Mm -hmm. And the people in her very, very high end program are like so grateful that they're in that program because she's helped them pivot. And that's an example of needing to pivot. But if you already have an online business where you're delivering your services online, then I'll, most likely that, you know, you're hearing people tell you to pivot. And so what's happening is you're like, okay, I'll create this really low price thing, you know, and, and I'm not knocking that because if you get a, an intuitive download, like this is what you need to offer right now, that's great. But it's tricky because most people can't decide, discern between fear and what in an actual intuitive hit. Right. And so you're seeing all these like discounts and low price things. And again, it, nothing wrong with that on the surface is the energy behind it. It's why are you doing that? And so a lot of like, let's say you're a relationship coach, we'll just use that one. This would be the time to dig in deeper with your messaging and really get empowered with your messaging, really speak to the heart of your ideal client. And I have a client who's a love coach that did $15,000 in sales in March. Like this is just 
few days ago, right? And it just goes to show that there are people that are using this time to fix problems that they have. Yeah, so I like the word you use there, to fix problems, to help people solve their problem, not to take advantage of people or prey on people. Like that's not what, she, when she made that $15,000, she wasn't preying on people who were like victims. She is actually helping people get out of their own victimhood and into the solution that they're looking for. So I think that's an important mindset shift for people to make as they're thinking about their messaging. Totally. Yeah. And it's like, not everyone needs to rush out and be like, Oh, I have to create this low priced thing. I mean, like I said, for a lot of people, you don't need to pivot. You need to really just get more powerful in your message and show up even more with your message. Um, so anytime we're creating marketing from fear of the future or scarcity or not enoughness, you know, we're not in that powerful archetype. Um, we want to create from a clear, clean, space, um, like getting those, those intuitive downloads and creating from there. Um, and I just think that you got to be careful with all the pivot talk and, and don't, you know, if you're, if you're doing that, you're probably doing it before, right? If you were like being blown by the wind, like yes. well, this your marketer says this, and this one says that, then you're probably falling into that right now. So this is your opportunity to actually realize, okay, I am a creator what am I creating? You know, do I, am I being called to offer something different? Um, or is this my time to really shine and help people, you know, fix, fix their problems? Like we said, so those are some of the, um, the don'ts. Um, hold on. Those are We're super thinking. helpful. Yeah. And there, there's a bunch more in the document. Oh, I'm sure there are. You have, you are a wealth of information. So if people don't already follow you, they really should as much as possible get on Jessica's radar because she, she offers so much content that is generous and free and she's, and, and, and it's always being updated too. It's not like a stagnant message. So hi, highly recommend following Jessica Riverson. Thank you so much. Okay. So let's get into the do's. Um, Excellent. You know, getting creative, obviously, right? Um, this is sort of similar to what I was just saying, but like, don't do stuff out of fear, you know, do things out of love doing, and, and, and this is like where like discernment comes in big time. So really like this could be our time to get really clear on hearing our intuition and taking those actions because what I'm seeing is a lot of actions out of fear and it just makes you feel worse because then if that marketing campaign doesn't work, then you're in even more fear, yes. right? So it's a totally different energy. So our greatest feminine gift is creativity. And I think that's, what's going to bring us through this time. It's going to bring all, I mean, if everyone in the world was like, okay, how can I be creative and resourceful? And a lot of people are, a lot of people are figuring, figuring out how we can help each other. And it's a beautiful thing. So do continue to serve your high-end clients with your high-end offers. Mm -hmm. You don't need to radically change everything to a low price point. Could you have different price points? Sure. But again, if you do it out of fear, it's probably going to backfire. Definitely follow intuitive guidance. Um, something I've been talking about in my um, intuitive marketing masterclass was hearing your intuitive guidance and taking action immediately, right? So a really quick story about that would be I had this client and we love to ask this question um, in my programs. What's the most fun, pleasurable, expansive way to create clients right now? So we had someone in our last Attractor Soul Tribe immersion. So this was like within the last two weeks. And so she got this guidance that she should start talking about self-worth. So she's a love coach and it's, you know, women who are struggling with relationships and like attracting the wrong guys, all that kind of stuff. And so she just got this hit that, you know, I should really talk about this other aspect of like self-love and your relationship with self, not, not even talking about the men and attracting the wrong men, like, but just really talk about your self-love. And so she started talking about that. She started writing posts about it using the formula that I'm about to teach you all. And she started putting it in her emails and then boom, someone wrote her back and was like, Hey, oh my gosh, I really am resonating with that message. And that person became a $3,300 client. So, I mean, that might seem, it might stop, seem really benign, like you get this like little intuitive hit that you should talk about this thing, but that happens all day long and then we don't listen. Or you hear, call your sister-in-law and you're like, okay, I'll do that later or something. But you don't know what's going to happen because one of the things we talk about is you set your money goal and then you give your intuition the job of fulfilling that. And so... 
when that happens, once you do that, then you have to listen to those, those things. So if you hear go live today, if you hear, you know, call my sister-in-law, you don't know what clients are coming to you, how the universe is working on your behalf. Um, so I love mixing like the strategy with the intuitive because it's so much more powerful because then your energy behind your messaging is clear and clean. It's and not, clean. Yeah. Clear or I got to get a client to pay a bill. It's like, no, I'm a creator. I've set my money goal and then I'm going to show up and serve no matter what. So the other a couple of their dues would be to empower people to be in their sovereignty. So through your marketing, you know, you're empowering yourself to be a creator, but let people know that they're a creator too. Like they have the power to shift into a new energy and that you're the one that can help them do that. Right. So, you know, inspire people to, to invest in their own transformation. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last do that I'll cover, which you won't be surprised is for the love of God, <laughs> make calls to action. <laughs> right. So I would harp on this for a moment, <laughs> but, um, okay. Let me give you like the short version. Cause I get really passionate about this. If people don't know how to buy from you, they won't buy from you. So this is our, this, this, if you have any issue with this, you had it before now, right? So 100%. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is just your opportunity to like bust yourself on this whole thing. Because especially now you're like, oh my God, it's really like not nice to sell. You got to get over that. If your creative genius is supposed to be, if you're an entrepreneur, okay, if you're an entrepreneur, you're supposed to sell your creative genius. You're supposed to exchange it, the energy, right? Like that's what you're supposed to be doing. So um, I believe you have a soul group. You have a, a, you know, you have this spiritual, on a spiritual level, there's a group of people you're supposed to serve. And so if you don't show up, you know, we're humans, right? Spiritual beings having a human experience. So we're humans. You need to speak human language mm -hmm. that they understand your energy. Like people will feel energy and be like, Oh my God, I'm meant to work with this person. Or, oh my God. I just feel aligned. That's there. But if you want to turbocharge it, you need to put like human words and learn, like learn marketing, right? Learn just a little bit about calls to action so that you can, clearly concisely in a compelling way move people to the next step and it's amazing that we put out all this inspirational content and we share we do all this stuff and then we don't tell people how, how to work with us. us yeah there's nothing wrong with that right so when you download the attractor soul tribe guide i'm giving you the call to action bible so people, generous yeah i've had 120 people buy the program for three ninety seven mm -hmm. to get it, so it—I mean—that alone is probably worth four hundred dollars. It's worth the price of admission, and mm -hmm. I've, I've never given it away for free. So this is one of my, you know, like things of like giving, you know, giving some service during this time. But I won't have it up forever, just because mm -hmm. I feel like I want—I want to work with people who are using it, right? But if you're a go-getter. You can take this call to action Bible. It's got, it's got examples of calls to action. It has word banks because the biggest thing is, well, how do I transition to a call to action? How do I do like an email or a live stream or like create content and then naturally move into a call to action? So I give you all the different word banks of words you can choose like words and phrases. And I give you different types of calls to action. So if you want to get clients right now and you immerse yourself in that call to action Bible, make it your own. Don't just like copy and paste because it won't sound like you, but use it, study it, learn from it. And people will start messaging you yeah. to work with you. <laughs> so, you know, that is, it, it is just incredible. I mean, I, it's one of the, you know, when you create something and you're just like, really you just cool. love it so much. Yeah. I think it's so awesome. It, it really <laughs> is. So, I mean, I'm the first one to be like, this is awesome. You need this. I was um, in your program the first time around. And when you did it the, the very last, last year at this time, and you had just created it. So it, it, it totally changed my relationship to telling people that I have an offer and they can actually work with me. So it's, it's very valuable. I, I know firsthand. Awesome. I'm so glad. So let's get to the formula. All right. So this is, 
this is kind of a variation of the formula that I teach in the Attractor Soul Tribe Immersion. This is, I just kind of worded it differently so that, I don't know why I worded differently. I just came up <laughs> with a different way of wording it because I thought it would be easier for people to understand. So it's basically the formula that you learned as well. And this, it's based off an age old copywriting formula. So what you need to understand about this formula that I'm about to teach you is that the highest paid marketers in the entire world, this is the formula that they use day in and day out. And when, once you learn it, you're going to start seeing commercials on TV. And you'll be like, there it is, there it is, there it is. And it is, you have to use it for good. Okay. So you have to use it for good, which I know you all will, but don't underestimate the power of it. With this formula, you don't just make one post or one email or one video and then be like, well, that didn't work. Obviously, marketing works over time. People need to say, see the offer that you're offering like seven to 10 times. Um, that's a whole other conversation. But I just want you to know that this formula, it's, it's a world-class marketing. Like It is something that is so basic yet so powerful that all the best copywriters, all the best marketers, this is what they do. And us regular people <laughs> who are building our you know, online businesses, we... we Maybe just one of known about this unless we studied copywriting, right? So here's the formula if you want to write it down. The first, the first part is address the problem. So you address the problem. doesn't matter if this is a video, an email, a post, any kind of content that you're creating. So you address the problem. So that's why you need to know what your client's pain point is. So you know, write down what their top like pain points are, and that'll help you create this kind of content. So... You address the problem right off the bat, and then you want to paint a picture of the problem. So when you paint a picture of the problem, it needs to be very specific. So whenever I'm working with people, I'm always harping on the word specific because, well, let me just explain what it means. To, so when you paint a specific picture, it means you give details. So an example would be, let's do a health niche. So you say, you start out your content saying like, oh gosh, isn't it horrible when you, when you, um, you finish in a, like a really yummy meal and then you have this huge food baby. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who deals with bloating, they're like, oh my God. Oh, I get that. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and maybe it's someone like, maybe your ideal client is someone that's had chronic digestive issues and they just. They've tried all the different things, but they've never really solved the problem, right? So then you want to paint the picture of the problem. So you would say something like, I get it. Um, I used to struggle with that. So now I'm going to paint the picture, right? I, every, you know, I would, every night I would go to bed um, looking like I had a food baby. And then I'd wake up in the morning and, you know, it, my stomach would be like flat. But then by the middle of the afternoon after my first meal, it would be like poofed out again. And... And, and then I would look in the mirror and I would see like that I was puffy and, um, you know, I, I, I felt like I was eating healthy, you know, I was like eating vegetables and I, I was avoiding like gluten. And I, it's like, I still couldn't figure out why this was happening. And, and there I was like buying all the gluten-free breads and, you know, going to five different stores to get like the special foods. So you see how I'm like Very thinking specific. what yes. life is like. Yep. Okay. So you do that, right? And then, so that, so we've got, say what the problem is, paint the picture of the problem. Number three is paint the picture of what's possible when they're working with you and your gifts, mm -hmm. right? So then I might move into saying something like, you know, the truth is if you've been dealing with that, there's a deeper problem going on and it starts in your gut, right? And so then I could move into um, what's possible, you know, uh, the truth is, once once we heal your gut, uh, what's going to happen is your your bloating will become obsolete, right? Um, even though you've been eating all these health so called healthy foods, what you haven't done is healed the gut. And so when we go in and heal the gut, you know, you, your digestion will start to run smoothly. You will be able to eat a meal and your stomach will be virtually the same size. You know, no more food babies. You'll, um, 
you won't have to go to five different stores to get all the special foods. Mm. You'll know exactly, you'll be able to get these foods from like a regular grocery store, mm -hmm. right? So I'm kind of going into like what's going to be possible, what are some of the, the benefits. Um, you know, you'll, that puffiness will go down out of your face and bloating will be something that, you know, is a, is a thing of the past. Um, and then I would introduce my gifts and move into step four, which is a call to action. So mm -hmm. then I would say, that's where I come in. Mm -hmm. I am an expert at healing the gut. And my specialty is in working with women just like you who have, you know, done every diet program, seen the naturopaths and seen the doctors and, and feel like they're eating all the, the healthy, gluten-free everything, and they're still struggling. What I do is I take you through my process, my gut healing process, and blah, 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 right? And then your call to action could be, it could be a long one or a short one. You'll see that in the call to action Bible. But if it's a short one, it could just be like, um, don't worry, I got you. My gut healing method works. If you want a free consultation, click right here. Or to, no, I'd rather make it stronger. To get your free consultation, book here, mm -hmm. right? So that's all we have to do. And it's like, obviously it takes practice, but that simple formula and like weaving that into your marketing, it, it makes it very clear that you have the solution. And most of the time what we're doing is just putting inspirational content, which is great, mm -hmm. but it doesn't move people through the process. Like, I feel like I want to buy that program right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I totally get it. The, <laughs> the thing is, um, what you've just given us here is a great example of content that is useful, but doesn't give away the solution. It doesn't make them feel too full. It makes them see possibility. It makes them think it's, it's, it could be that like their life could change. And the perfect example is what you just gave us in these steps. Like you basically gave the paradigm away for free. So why would people hire you? Because this shit is hard to do on your own. Like you can give people your formula all day long, Jessica, but like most people don't know how to use words the way that you do, right? So that's why they would need to hire you. Like, okay, I understand the formula that Jessica gave me. Great. Now what? Now? Hire her so that she can tweak your words with you and give you examples and pull it out of your head. That's why, right? So like, there's a difference, I think, in the messaging. The, the last piece might be, go ahead and put it out there. It doesn't mean you're giving anything away for free. They still need your help to hold their hand through it. And that's what you do in AYST. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, we teach a lot about that in the immersion, um, learning how to, how to deliver your content, yes. right? Because... Yes. So notice that I didn't do, not that you can never give tips, but I, because tips can be valuable, but if all your content is just tips, because most, most health are like, here's a recipe, you know, here's a deep loading recipe. Right. Just giving me a recipe isn't resolving the whole. That's right. I still have the bloating. I still need that recipe, but solve my problem where I don't even need that recipe. Then, then you've made a real transformation. Yeah, exactly. And so you, you want to like, now is the time to really master um, this type of marketing. If, if, I mean, look, if your marketing wasn't working before, it's probably still kind of like not working now. And, and now you're really like, okay, I need to cause look, everyone's online. Yeah. You know, and maybe I could wrap up with this, which I probably should have started with. Everyone's online. The next eight weeks in particular, mm -hmm. and this is like as far as I can see into the future of what we're being told, but um, the next eight weeks is, is most critical because most people, as far as what we kind of know now, will be homebound for eight weeks. Yeah. After that, maybe we hope <laughs> people can leave their homes, but we know for sure it's already kind of been determined that for the next eight weeks, people are online. Everyone's trying to move their business online. So it's now more than ever the time to learn to stand out. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to just end on this note, which is you have, an, you have a choice. You can be a consumer right now, which is you consume the media, you consume the fear, you consume other people's stuff, watch free stuff, <laughs> which is, you know, okay, you can do that. Or you can decide that you're going to be an influencer which is someone who is a media maker, you're going to decide that you're going to learn how to be an influencer and you're going to do it and implement it. Um, you could be someone that creates the stories and creates the media and creates the new changes. Right. And so it's like, what are you going to be? Are you going to be an influencer right now? 
like Jen. Um, and I'm, I saw all the videos. Like, I'm just loving what's been on your page here. So I'm honored to be on Thank your page. You. Like be an influencer or be a consumer. Like, you know, you, you can't be like sort of a little, it's like you're either one or the other. You know, you have to step into which role it's going to be. Well, how can people join AYSC? Because I remember you said that it's starting mid-April, right? The 17th? Yeah, it's starting on April 17th. Um, we actually have, I haven't checked today the enrollment, but as of yesterday, we had eight spots left for the early bird pricing. Mm -hmm. It is such an incredible value. So What's the early bird pricing? Yeah, it's two ninety seven. So you're basically okay, getting... That's a great off. deal. Yeah. The last time, um, this is our seventh round of AYST, but the last time that I had us, I only had a special pricing one other time that was on Black Friday and we sold out in three days, which, which, which was like a wonderful surprise to me. But I'm training you and just 20 other people. So it's a very yeah. small group. I'm training you for 21 days. You're coming on Zoom. You're sharing your screen. You're asking me questions, showing me your copy. And we didn't talk a ton of, I mean, I talked, touched on this a little bit, but Jen knows, like I do a lot of healing and coaching. I was just going to say that. In the program. So, because we have to clear all your visibility stuff, <laughs> all your, what are people going to think about me stuff. Yeah. And so we're working on your energy and your actual words and copy because I could teach you copy and then you're going to go out there and just try to sound like me or something like that. That's not going to work. So we have to work on the energy and make those shifts in the mindset then you get masterful at like your authentic voice, but also using powerful copy and structure. Mm -hmm. And so over the 21 days, we've seen, we've seen people do $16,000 in sales or $12,000 in sales. We've seen people who are like, Oh my God, I've never got a discovery session before mm -hmm. from a post. And they're like, Oh my God, I got one discovery session. or Oh my God, I got two discovery sessions or Oh my God, people are finally engaging with my post. So right. kind of depends where you're at in the online game, but we've seen people all the way from having like $16,000 in sales in 21 days to like, Oh my God, I got my first like discovery session from a post. Um, but we've seen really incredible results. So if you want to get clients from social media, this would, this would be like step one <laughs> is learning how to do this. I will put the link in the comments and I, I cannot recommend this enough. It's, um, and the, it, it, she's going to help you with your courage. She's going to break through blocks that you didn't even know you have, stuff that's keeping you from posting specifically on social media. Um, so Jessica, thank you so much. This was very generous and I love talking to you. And I know that we went over, but I think that you had so many gems to share that I really appreciate that you did that. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you so much. Bye everyone. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app. And tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.